But, fight is our fight, brother. Thank you, thank you. Amen. But I mean, for me personally, I can't unsee what I've seen in the last 26 months. Mm -hmm. There's still two men that are held 780 some days today on trumped up charges. And when you, when you take those phone calls every day, it's pretty tough to snap out of that. So thanks again for coming out. I'm going to let George lead us in prayer. And then uh, when you, there is room inside, uh, I do hope that you, I, I want family and friends to have a seat first. I understand a lot of you guys are going to go to work. Uh, but it's three weeks. So thanks for being here today. But when you get a chance, come say hi tomorrow or two days or four days. Because we want to, it's a good feeling to look back every once in a while and see that courtroom full. So the jury has been selected in the trial of the Coots Trio, a.k.a. the Coots Three, Marco Van Hugenboss, George Jansen, and Alex Van Herth. That means the publication ban on pretrial proceedings is now over, and we can fully disclose and talk about proceedings as they unfold. This is Robert Krejcik in Lethbridge, Alberta, reporting for Rebel News. All of the defendants are being charged with mischief over $5,000 for their roles, their involvement with the Coots border blockade in 2022. You'll remember that protest because it was sort of adjacent to a sister protest with the Freedom Convoy in Ottawa the same year. These two protests occurred at the same time, and they were unified ideologically, politically, philosophically in their opposition to what I refer to as the COVID-19 enterprise. This, again, apparatus of surveillance and control, these so-called public health orders, edicts, and mandates issued by government and ancillary institutions and corporations. So what did we see today? We saw a bunch of ordinary Albertans, I think all of them from Lethbridge, and I mean that in the nicest sense of the term, considered for jury duty. 14 jurors were selected. Two of them are spares in the event that any of the other jurors have some sort of emergency and can no longer fulfill their jurist duties. And I would describe them as a sort of eclectic group of people, different ages, different backgrounds, different looks in a physical sense. And from what I've heard, people who live here in Lethbridge, they interpreted this group based on what they saw of them in the courtroom as representative of Lethbridge. In other words, people who live here in the city told me, you know what, that looked like a Lethbridge group of people. Now, the screening process for the jurors was essentially administered by the judge via a series of questions, a questionnaire that was asked of all the potential jurors. Some of the questions were contingent on answers provided in a previous question, but I'll share with them with you as follows. This is essentially a quote. The first question was whether or not COVID-19 had affected the juror or anyone close to the juror. Now, I find that question somewhat problematic in that in common vernacular, COVID-19 is often used by people to refer to the apparatus of surveillance and control built upon the context of so-called public health in response to COVID-19. In other words, it's very common to speak with people in the streets, anywhere else, and they'll say COVID-19 as a euphemism for mandates, for orders, for edicts and decrees issued by government or industry. So given that lack of clarity, I found that a very strange question because it's not always the case that people who use the term COVID-19 are specifically referring to the virus. Now, if the potential juror responded yes, the judge then asked a follow-up question whether or not this juror would have the capacity to proceed with his or her jurist duties in an unbiased manner. Could they put that aside the fact that they had been affected by COVID-19 or someone close to them had been, and proceed in operating in an unbiased and fair-minded way in accordance with the orders of the judge and in accordance with the evidentiary exhibits provided in the trial. The potential jurors were also asked if they had strong opinions in opposition to or in support of the Coots border blockade. They were also asked if they had any strong opinions in one direction or another towards people who had been charged with or convicted of 
crimes in relation to their participation or involvement with the Kutz border blockade. The jurors were also asked if they had sat in on proceedings in trials of any persons charged with crimes in relation to participation or involvement with the Kutz border blockade. They were also asked if they had sat in the gallery for the Public Order Emergency Commission. Now, one unique thing about today's proceedings relative to most others was this demonstration that took place right here on the promenade that I'm standing on in front of the courthouse main entrance. And I saw about, let's say, under 100 people in support of the defendants and in support of the cause behind the Kutz blockade and protest, this demand for freedom, this opposition to onerous and abusive and extractive government that pushed policies ostensibly in pursuit of so-called public health. So there were a bunch of donuts here from Tim Hortons, boxes and boxes of them, muffins, lots of coffee. And towards the end, the three defendants took a moment to address their supporters. A prayer was said on their behalf in order to wish well upon them. And one more note I'll share with you is that I probably saw, along with Ezra Levant, something like 12 police officers here for presumably security purposes. And I want you folks to keep in mind that there is nothing more peaceful than these sorts of people who do these demonstrations. So the idea that 12 police officers are required to somehow secure an area boggles the mind. And keep in mind that police officers do not work for free. So taxpayer resources are being spent or burned, depending on how you look at it, in order to provide security. Here we are, the three defendants, the Coots Trio, Alex Van Herk, George Jansen, and Marco Van Hugen, boss from left to right. So gentlemen, we had the jury selection today. Any remarks on what you observed in the proceedings? I feel pretty comfortable with, uh, with the, the outcome of it. There's definitely a jury of our peers. Uh, definitely, I see a lot of people that, yeah, are just normal Southern Albertans that could be, you know, one way or the other. So very comfortable that way. And uh, actually, George, I got a question for you. During today's demonstration before the proceedings, there was a gentleman also by the name of George. Is he related to you who led a prayer and made some remarks? Not, not at all. Uh, really good man. I definitely appreciate the guy. He's been around quite a bit supporting us and obviously praying for us. Prayer work. What about your thoughts on the demonstration itself, those supporters that came out? What do you think about that? Well, really good turnout. I mean, it's obvious to see. It's obvious to see that uh, this good group of people that support us, and it just makes us feel more confident going forward with everything that's going on. And uh, Marco, what about you? Any remarks you want to share about, you know, what happened today, the selection of the jury, what you might expect going forward? Now that the publication ban's over, we're at better, more liberty to speak about things as they unfold. Well, again, this is a heavily, heavily uh, politicized prosecution. Um, we were charged 20 months ago uh, for an event that occurred 26 months ago. And this is, this is tied to an event that essentially overthrew a premier and led to significant grassroots involvement in this province, which uh, led to significant change. And changes that are still in the works. So, um, you know, it goes back to the criminal element. You know, we're charged with mischief over 5,000. It's a serious charge. Uh, it's a broad charge. But looking back at who we are and what we have alleged to have done, um, all we did was challenge the powers of a tyrannical, out-of-control government. And looking back at history, the biggest criminals in history are not those who break common law, who beat up their neighbor, you know, rob, rob the bank. No, it's those who have stood up to government and challenged the status quo. And that is why we are here today. We are on trial for challenging those who are in positions of power and they feel threatened. Unless we get involved politically and support the political people that are involved and that are like-minded, and, and whether it's, it's through funding or whatever way, but we need to get involved because if we truly want to make change in our country, then we need to get involved politically. We're running two fundraising campaigns in relation to this trial. 
One is for the legal defense fund for the defendants. If you can help out the defendants, you can contribute at coots3.com. And keep in mind, lawyers don't work for free, and they're definitely not cheap. So if you do donate, keep in mind that you'll be issued a charitable receipt for your donation because this fundraising campaign is administered by the Democracy Fund, a nonprofit organization that we at Rebel News work with for these sorts of endeavors. Secondarily, we're doing a fundraising campaign to get me out here to do this sort of reporting. I came in from Ottawa, got economy airfare, got a rental car, I got an Airbnb, and while this is Lethbridge, Alberta, this is not New York City or Miami, it's still not free. And we, of course, depend on our viewers' generous support to continue producing this original in-the-field journalism. So if you can help us out, please do, and visit truckertrials.com.